Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys a bit more about Zinject and how we can take game objects that would normally be instantiated using something like the gameObject.instantiate method and get object creation to actually work in conjunction with Zinject so that those game objects that have dependencies will actually receive those uh, dependencies and go through the Zinject system. So right now I have this greeting spawner class created. It basically every second will create a copy of this greeting consumer somewhere on the screen. Um, and it's doing that using the gameObject.instantiate method, which is what you generally do in basic Unity. Um, however, when you instantiate a, a game object using this method, it doesn't go through this inject system, so the dependencies never get injected. So if we take a look over at the greeting consumer class that I created in the last video, you can see that it expects to get injected with an I greeting. Now, if that object is in the scene when the scene loads, basically it's something we hard put inside of the game scene, then it will get injected. But when we're spawning it using instantiate, it does not. So uh, let me show you what actually happens right now. Uh, these uh, game objects, the greeting, dis uh, sorry, the greeting dependent object is being represented by a check mark on the screen. So you'll see a bunch of these check marks pop up, but inside of the console, only the first game object will actually log the hello world message to the console. So the first object gets uh, injected properly, as you can see here, but every other object is getting a null reference exception. It's not being injected with the concrete uh, greeting message for the iGreeting interface. So how do we solve that? Well, one way that they recommend in the uh, documentation for Zenject is to use a factory and then to let Zenject go through that factory and inject the dependencies that way. So how we can create a factory is actually pretty simple. So we're going to do a nested class for that factory here. So I'm going to do public class and I'll call it factory so that whenever we want to reference this factory class, we could type in greeting consumer dot factory. And this inherits from the placeholder factory class and it's a placeholder factory of greeting consumer, which basically means that we're going to be spitting out greeting consumer objects from this placeholder factory. Now, if we need to add any dependencies, then we simply add it to the left as a list of uh, parameters, as the generic type parameters. So here I can put in a I greeting, which means that this placeholder factory is gonna inject the I greeting and it's gonna resolve a new greeting consumer object. We don't need to type anything else for this placeholder factory. If you look through the documentation, there's also an iFactory interface, which would allow you to have extra customization for your placeholder factory. But if you just need it to do a simple injection, then you can use placeholder factory. And then in the main mono behavior class, all we need to create is a public void construct method. It needs to be construct because game objects, are, uh, mono behavior game objects cannot have a regular constructor in Unity. Um, and then we need to tell the class what kind of object we need injected. So we need the I greeting. And then we basically take this I greeting and we set it to the new I greeting. And if I recall, I believe you need to move the inject over to this so it becomes a method injection rather than a, um, a variable injection. A rec the documentation does recommend using uh, method injection and constructor injections whenever possible. I won't get into the details about that. So this is gonna mean that whenever the factory creates the game object, it's gonna run that construct method. I think the name of this has to be construct and it will inject at that point in time. Um, for the game object that already exists inside the scene, we might need an inject here as well. We'll test it and find out. Uh, but that's the general idea here. You use a factory to create it and you implement this construct method and you inject there. So now uh, with this factory, we want to go over to the spawner class and we instead want to do greeting consumer dot factory dot create. And I guess we need to actually add in the I greeting object here. So what we can do, since this greeting spawner will already exist in the inside of the scene, 
it's okay to inject it in here. So the I greeting object will just come into play right there and we pass it into the factory. And this will create a greeting consumer object. So we should change this type over here to greeting consumer, making it more specific anyway. So when you're creating your factories, uh, if you're using the placeholder factory class, then your output type goes on the right over here. And if you need anything to be inside of the factory, so another object like a manager that you might use in order to create your objects, you could add it in here. But so how you can take the greeting consumer class and make it so that you can dynamically inject this I greeting whenever we create a new object rather than using uh, game object dot instantiate we can use a factory instead so to add a factory uh, we would do this as a nested class public class factory so this will be greeting consumer dot factory for this particular factory and it um, extends from placeholder factory and the output type is going to be greeting consumer now if in the factory you're going to have any other dependencies like a manager then you can uh, add in extra parameters before the output value so uh, requirements for the factory on the left and then the output value on the right um, but I believe we don't actually um, need that here in order to inject the I greeting so we're not passing an I greeting object into the factory but we're going to allow the factory to instead run a method that we're about to implement here which is public void construct which requires an I greeting and we'll call that greeting and then we will take the I greeting variable and set that to the value we passed in so it's a lot like having a constructor here but um, using object constructors um, for one reason or another doesn't work with unity so we need to instead implement this method here in conjunction with the placeholder factory so I believe we inject here to get the I greeting object and so the placeholder factory we will run at some point during that Zenject will be used with the factory this is a class out of Zenject by the way and Zenject will run this constructed uh, con and Zenject will run this construct method and inject the I greeting uh, similar to how we were with the variable injection um, now I think we might want to leave the inject here for the objects that are already in the scene, like the first one that was manually added. I'm not certain about that, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. So now over in the greeting spawner, we want to change instantiate to uh, consumer prefab dot factory. Oh wait, sorry, sorry. Uh, we want it to be greeting consumer dot factory. Okay, and the factory is going to have a create method. So we just run it like that. And then this is going to return a greeting consumer object rather than a game object. Okay, and now over on the greeting spawner class, we are going to need a factory. And we're going to want to install and inject this factory as well. So over here, we're going to need an inject. So this class is going to use the Zinject library and it is going to be a greeting consumer dot factory. And we'll just call this greeting consumer factory. Okay, great. And now down here where it says instantiate consumer prefab dot game object, what we want instead is to do greeting consumer factory dot create so that'll spit out the uh, greeting consumer game object so we can change it over here unless we want to cast the greeting consumer as a game object uh, of course the greeting consumer itself is a mono behavior script which is attached to a game object so there will be a game object there um, depends on what we need to reference over here if anything um, so i'll just reference the mono behavior script there with greeting consumer and uh, now this factory we need to add this to the installer so over here on this greeting installer class we're going to bind a factory so to bind the factory we have type parameters on the left if any for the factory itself we don't have any so we next we need the type of game object we are 
uh, binding with the factory, which is greeting consumer, the type of object that the factory spits out. And the factory type is greeting consumer dot factory. And then we are going to bind this as single. So this means for the greeting consumer class, we are going to have one greeting consumer factory and it's a single factory. So wherever we have a need for a greeting consumer dot factory that outputs greeting consumer, it's going to be injected with this single game object. So we'll have one greeting consumer factory for pretty much everything inside of our scene or project context. Okay, so uh, just looking over everything again, the factory should get injected here. And whenever we need those dynamically created game objects, the factory will run. And the factory is a placeholder factory of creating consumer. It doesn't take any parameters, um, but it should inject this I creating in when the object is dynamically created using the factory. So let's see how that goes. Uh, clearing the console and making sure that the greeting dispenser still has the script attached. Okay, it's still there. It's referencing the mono behavior script on the consumer prefab. So this may work. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, assert hit. Okay, so as it suggests right here, uh, we're supposed to use instantiate prefab for component because we're using a mono behavior here and we want to create the game object for that mono behavior. So over in the greeting installer, instead of binding the factory as single, what we actually want to do is uh, from component and new prefab and then we need the greeting consumer prefab. So this should actually be a setting for us. So let's call this greeting consumer and we'll say greeting consumer prefab. And then what we can do is we can move the prefab from the greeting spawner class over to the greeting installer. So this will make it so that the prefab for the default greeting consumer will be basically at the context of the scene or the project, depending on where we put this installer, rather than attached to the greeting spawner itself which is probably better anyway. So in order to set this value, one way we could do it is to make this public because this is a mono installer, so this variable will show up in the inspector where we can set it. And then that'll be passed in here. So it's gonna take the component from the game object prefab and it'll use that in creating the new object through the factory. So let's just go ahead and set that up over here. So let's see, over on the scene context where we have the greeting installer mono behavior, we are going to want to pass in the greeting dependent um, prefab. So greeting consumer prefab, right? That is a type of greeting consumer. And then it should disappear from the greeting spawner. So the greeting spawner really no longer knows anything about which object exactly it's spawning. It just knows that it relies on a factory in order to spawn that object. Okay, so now I think it should work, but we will hit play and find out. So we have the hello world to start. Oh, and look, uh, more objects are being created and they are getting injected with the, the concrete greeting object instead of getting a null reference error failing to inject the interface. So it's actually working now and that's exactly what we wanted here. So basically what we've done is we've created a factory that will pull in Zinject and inject the dependency where we need it for an object that's being dynamically created with a factory. So yeah, hopefully this tutorial has been really helpful for you guys, especially if you're trying to get something like an enemy spawner to work where those objects are created after the scene loads. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching this tutorial and I will see you guys in my future Unity content.